type of oh, way. And the shoot. reason why I'm saying the problem why we got Pop a lot in here, y'all. Huh? What happened? We got Pop a lot in here. Okay, go oh, Pop 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 ties. Hey. Yay! Yo, what up, my nigga? My, what up? What up? Girl? I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Digital. Maserati, Rick in Detroit. Convertible bird in Miami. Graduated summer cum laude. Strip club made a tsunami. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Grateful Edmonds with the snowflakes. Craig Pettis in the M Town. Sal Magluta with the boat game. Falcone with the cocaine. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Larry Davis. From close range. Russell Kong, the Versace better win. Come real far, but don't know where I'm heading. Motherfucking crocodile of Wall Street. Silver on my fingers and boots on my feet. Always be a goat, not a goddamn sheep. Email me, fuck your message at the beep. As cryptocurrency becomes widely adopted, we must prevent its use in money laundering, illicit darknet transactions, ransomware attacks, and other crimes that impact all of us. Today, the Department of Justice has dealt a major blow to cyber criminals looking to exploit cryptocurrency. The department has charged Ilya Liechtenstein and Heather Morgan. Tonight, the biggest Bitcoin bust in U.S. history. Bitcoin, Ethereum, hold on. Features a New York City couple with a penchant for posting. Crocodile of Wall Street. Silver on my fingers and boots on my feet. 31-year-old Heather Morgan, also known by her rap name Razzlecon, and husband, 34-year-old Ilya Dutch Liechtenstein, arrested by the U.S. Department of Justice in connection with a 2016 hack of a virtual currency exchange. The DOJ also seizing $3.6 billion in cryptocurrency, its largest financial seizure ever, according to officials. According to court documents obtained by NBC News, Liechtenstein and Morgan are alleged to have conspired to launder the proceeds of bitcoins that were stolen in a hack of Bitfinex in 2016. The couple that was attempting to launder those funds, the Deputy Attorney General explained that uh, they tried through a flurry, what she describes as a flurry or a storm of transactions, to hide the trail of the money. Morgan's LinkedIn describing her as a quote, serial entrepreneur. Lichtenstein says he's the founder of a blockchain startup. The couple appearing here together in a virtual workshop for Morgan's sales consulting company, Salesfolk. Thanks for talking with us today. In a statement released after the arrest of Morgan and Lichtenstein, an assistant attorney general for the DOJ said, we will not allow cryptocurrency to be a safe haven for money laundering or a zone of lawlessness within our financial system. In a statement, Bitfinex said, quote, we've been cooperating extensively with the DOJ since its investigation began and will continue to do so. In the words of uh, Deputy Attorney General herself, this announcement is very much uh, proof that crypto is not a safe haven for criminals. For uh, the industry, it's a very clear, uh, you know, and another example of many that it's not uh, a, a game of uh, ask for uh, forgiveness and not permission. The digital rebellion is here. Old money's out. Cryptocurrency hitting the mainstream in recent months. I'm getting into crypto with FTX. You in? Even celebrities getting into the mix. Fortune favors the brave. But that spike in popularity raising security concerns about the digital currencies. Kim Kardashian and Floyd Mayweather are among celebrities getting scrutiny for their promotion of crypto. A lawsuit filed earlier this month in California accusing them of pumping a little known currency Ethereum X as part of a scheme to profit and defraud investors. If people are interested in, in getting into this world of cryptocurrency, what do they need to keep in mind? The regulation is still evolving and you have to be careful you have to do your due diligence uh, it is at the moment still a higher risk uh, a, a place to put your money do your research every night we hear the same advice here on top story you got to be careful when you go into crypto dasha joins us now from our top story studios there in new york dasha you know the bitfinex hack happened six years ago so i have to ask you how was the fbi able to make these arrests now 
Yeah, Tom, this is so interesting. This is where some experts say that the government actually benefits from blockchain technology because it's more transparent, it's more traceable than traditional currency. The way the technology works is you can actually uh, track those transactions. Anyone can. That data is available. So it would have been much more difficult to recover this kind of sum with, say, the dollar. Uh, and this was indeed the biggest financial seizure in doj history yeah yeah we back it's your boy pop a lot mob 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 we headed to nyc with it headshot city meet us on wall street we about to really run it up now today we are going to be covering a female by the name of heather rhiannon morgan but she want us to call her Razzle Can, so we gonna call her whatever she want. But she on some shit though. We really can't talk about her without talking about her husband, Ilya Dutch Lichtenstein. But she's gonna be the main character in this movie. Now, according to her Wikipedia page, she was born in Oregon. She grew up in Tama, California, and her father is a retired biologist, and her mother is a librarian at a high school. She graduated from UC Davis in 2011 with a bachelor's degree. And her LinkedIn profile pretty much said that she was a serial entrepreneur. By all accounts, she was focused on finance at an early age. And that would lead her starting off her career working for World Bank in Cairo and Hong Kong. Now, listen to that. She probably was somebody that could have made it and been well off in the world. But not Heather Morgan. She was about a bag. So fast forward to 2019, where a company by the name of Bitfinex, which was a cryptocurrency exchange company, was hacked in August of that year, which would be the second largest breach of a Bitcoin exchange platform at that time. Around 119,756 Bitcoins were stolen, and they were worth roughly $72 million at that time. So if the person's responsible for that, think anything like I think, we in a clear because Bitcoin supposedly is untraceable. That's why they use it on the deep web. That's why it's the money that's transferred during illicit activities. But we're wrong because fast forward six years later in February 2002, because that's going to be where Heather Morgan and her husband, Ilian, would be indicted by the federal government on conspiracy charges to launder the Bitcoin, which at this time was worth 3.6 billion with the increase of Bitcoin with the time since the money was stolen. Now the couple dubbed the Bitcoin Bonnie and Clyde was arrested and held on $3 million and $4.5 million bonds respectfully. There would be a lot of arguments about the couple getting bail because Ilian Lichtenstein is a dual citizen to Russia, as well as prosecutors claiming that they still have access to this large sum of money that they're on trial for. Prosecutors would continue to argue that the pair who lived on Wall Street in Lower Manhattan should be denied bail, calling them extreme flight risk due to those circumstances. It's still quite unsure how authorities were able to track the pair but after doing a little bit of research on the crypto, it is actually all laid out there and pretty much transparent. It goes through a series of transactions to try to conceal where the money came from and where the money is going. But if you do follow that trail, authorities do have the ability to find where that money ended up eventually. Now, I want to go out on a limb and say that it has to be of a certain dollar amount before the government even gets involved. So, for instance, if somebody take you off for $900 in Bitcoin, I definitely don't think that the U.S. government is coming to get involved with that transaction. But if somebody take you off for $9 million, I definitely think the government is going to be involved. So when you're talking about $71 million, that's next level. Now, they both were charged with trying to defraud the United States government and also conspiracy to commit money laundering. And those charges nowhere light 
they carry a maximum sentence of 25 years to life. Now, me just being me, I don't think that they're going to get that sentence. And I don't think that they're going to return the money. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how this trial plays out. Y'all get in the comment box. Let me know if convicted, how much time you think they're going to get. I assume that they both don't have a record. Um, I doubt they're going to get 25 years in prison. I'm going to say somewhere like five years. Now, is it worth it to keep that $71 million for that five years in prison? This is the magical question. Usually we get a lot of people in the comment box saying that no amount of money is worth any time of my life given away to the system. Now we're talking about if they get five years, that's going to be $14.2 million per year that they would make while serving that five years. And if they get 10 years, that's going to be $7.1 million per year. Now it's not a lot of people making that amount of money that's out in the streets. But to support the people's argument that say that they don't want to give up any time, you never know how much money you can make being a free man. So what y'all think? Y'all get in the comment box. Y'all let me know what y'all think about my girl Razul Khan's music. Y'all think she going to blow? Y'all think they should give the money back? Matter of fact, what would y'all do in a situation? It's your boy Papala. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. We're going to be back with some more real trill spill shit. And y'all make sure y'all hit the subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when it's dropping. Y'all get in the comment box and let me know what stories we need to cover, where we haven't been, what gangsters we missed, what cities we should head to. And y'all get at me however y'all see fit. Text me, tweet me, call me, tag me, mention me, email me, CC me, stop me in the streets. However, man, it's your boy Pop. Mob, mob, mob.